Hello, everyone. Thank you so much uh, for having me today. Bonjour à toutes et à tous. Uh, I've come here today uh, all the way from Abbotsford, British Columbia, the traditional territory of the Stalo people, um, to talk about Bill C-21. Um, I'll be frank and honest, uh, I do not think that Bill C-21 in its present form will achieve its goal of improving public safety. Worse still, my research documents the harm that this bill will cause to communities across Canada. I'd like to focus my comments on two uh, important areas of the bill. Uh, first, the prohibition on what the government has labeled assault-style firearms. Uh, the evidence from the scholarly literature, which I encourage you to review in the brief that my colleagues and I have submitted to this committee, uh, speaks fairly clearly. Uh, there's very little support in the literature for a ban on assault-style weapons. Bans in other jurisdictions have failed to achieve their intended goals of reducing mass shootings and homicides. Uh, the simple fact is these firearms are rarely used in crimes and easily substituted for other weapons. Second, the freeze on handgun ownership uh, is also unlikely to have an impact on gun crime in Canada. Handguns have been tightly regulated here since the 1930s. A variety of data sources, from police data to academic studies to government reports, have shown consistently that the vast majority of handguns showing up at crime, sorry, crime scenes in this country are being smuggled illegally from the United States. For example, data recently released by the Toronto Police shows that only 3% of crime guns in Ontario were legally owned in Canada before showing up at a crime scene, only 3%. There are clear economic incentives for gun smugglers. Handguns can be purchased uh, easily in the United States and sold for a large markup on the Canadian black market. Combined with a very concer a concerning rise of 3D printed firearms, uh, criminals in Canada and gangs will continue to have easy access to illegal firearms. I believe the freeze is also overly broad. Even if the assumption were accurate that freezing some handguns might reduce crime, which I don't believe it is, the freeze targets firearms that could not conceivably pose a major risk to public safety, such as low-powered 22 caliber handguns used by Olympic athletes. The freeze would also make Canada an outlier amongst our allies of 38 OECD countries, 33 allow licensed and vetted uh, citizens to own handguns. My research also speaks to the harm that Bill C-21 will cause. Uh, over the course of my research, I've surveyed over 16,000 Canadian gun owners from coast to coast and done longer interviews with almost 100 others. The people I've spoken to are not extremists. Most actually express their support for the strict gun control laws that Canada already has in place. When asked what values they associate with gun ownership, responsibility and community were the two most common. They do, however, feel cheated by legislation like Bill C-21 and expressed a serious loss of faith in the institutions of government as a result of recent policy decisions. And I want to share a few of the stories uh, that they were brave enough to share with me, uh, with you today. Uh, Jim is a young man living in rural Ontario, and after a car accident, he became a C6 quadriplegic. His love of shooting is one of the only hobbies, of target shooting is one of the only hobbies he's been able to carry over from his pre-injured life. His rifles may not look like grandpa's hunting rifle, but it's exactly the ergonomic features of these firearms that make them accessible, even possible, for him to use. Ava is a cowboy action shooter in her 60s who spends most of her time volunteering at her local range to organize competitions. Western enthusiasts like Ava dress up in cowboy clothes uh, and compete in shooting competitions with low-powered, single-action, six-shot revolvers. The effects of Bill C-21 will result in the slow death of the community that she has worked so hard to build. After all, any community that cannot welcome new members is living on borrowed time. Finally, Kane is a young Chinese-Canadian man in his early 20s living in BC. He's a reenactor, and his deep love of preserving the past connects him to a community of living history enthusiasts. He mostly shoots single-shot, black powder, muzzle-loading firearms, including some handguns that are now frozen. As your study of Bill C-21 progresses, you'll undoubtedly hear from many people like this. Uh, and I want to emphasize that the choices made in this room are not without consequence to real people uh, who have shared their stories with me. Creating good policy is about balancing the possible benefits of a policy with the potential harms. In the case of Bill C-21, my research suggests that the benefits are highly uncertain and the harms very real.